Shalom, this is Shira Sherbo coming to you from Sfat, Israel, and Torah for the Nations. And today I want to talk about my mom. I want to talk about something that happened when my mom was in her 30s and I was about 12. And it changed my life, the course of my life, forever. When mom was about 34, um, in the 19, it was, I think it was 1971, some really sweet college kids from Texas came and knocked on our door. And they asked my mom if she was saved. And my mom was not a religious person. And she said, I guess she didn't know if she was saved. And so my mom um, thought they were really sweet and she studied the Bible with them. And when my dad came home from work, my mom told him that she got saved. And my mom wanted him to get saved, and she wanted all of us to get saved. And she spent the rest of her life um, worried about people that weren't saved. And I just remember as a kid, as a 12-year-old, that it was really, really bad. Um, I knew that really bad things happened to you if you didn't get saved. And I worried about my dad, because he, he thought... My mom just went off the deep end. Why did you let these people in the house? What, you, what have you done? You've joined a cult. Uh, he didn't buy any of it. He, he, she would try to set up uh, Bible studies for him to get saved. And he said, I don't want what they're selling. Okay, and a lot of other things. <laughs> he didn't have anything nice to say about my mom's new friends. Okay, so... It reminds me a little bit of one of my favorite stories in the Bible about a woman that also wanted to be saved and she wanted her whole family to be saved. And her name was Rahab. And Rahab lived on the outskirts of town and uh, the story goes that she ran a brothel and that two Israelite spies showed up at her door one day. And Rahab was in the know because of her profession. Uh, she was very beautiful, and kings from all over the world wanted to be with her, and she knew their intimate thoughts, and she knew how they were shaking from fear of the God of Israel. And so Rahab was aware, uh, because, aware of what was going on in the world. Everyone saw what happened with Israel and how they were, God took them and, uh, from the most powerful country in the world, the Egyptians. He took three million slaves and brought them in the desert. It was all anybody talked about for 40 years was, what are they eating? What are they drinking? When are they coming out of the desert? What's going to happen to us when they come out? And so uh, Rahab uh, knows what's going on. And so when these spies show up at her door, she actually sees this up as an opportunity because she has a life-changing decision to make of where her loyalties are. Is she going to be loyal to her community who she does business with or uh, is she going to be loyal to these spies? And she, she chooses to be loyal to the spies and she saves them from the governing officials. She hides them. And then she says, you know, when you come to take over, I want you to save me and my family. So, salvation for Israel being freed from Egypt and salvation for Rahab and salvation, anytime we read about salvation, like when King David says, oh God, save me from my enemies, it's always a physical salvation. Nobody was talking about uh, anything spiritual. Like nobody would say in that day, like, are you saved? Because it was very obvious if you were saved or not. If God saved you, then you were still there. And so all of these years, up until the present, God has been saving Israel. And Israel has uh, gone through a lot. of when you, when you read history of the Spanish Inquisition and the Crusades, what has happened to the Jewish people is horrendous and um, it's a miracle and any, anybody that's paying attention you don't have to be Rahab you don't have to run a brothel to know what's going on in the world because now we have the internet and you can easily know that's one of the advantages I had when I was in my 30s that my mother didn't have she just trusted these people that came to her door they were very nice and she got saved and she never studied 
uh, from a uh, from a Israeli or a Jewish perspective, a Hebrew perspective, what what does salvation mean? So somewhere between um, the original meaning of salvation and the present time, salvation has gotten a new meaning. So what message do I want to give to my children? My children, I want you to know that you don't have to get saved and there is no hell. And that this is just something that uh, man-made religions have come up with. Um, and it's, it's not a thought from Israel. It's not a thought from the God of Israel. It was, didn't come into the world through the Israelites. Salvation has always meant physical salvation. You can look at the map now and you can see little bitty Israel surrounded by a lot of uh, Arab Muslim countries that want her to not exist. And you know what happened with Nazi Germany. I mean, it's just all through history. So salvation, from a Jewish perspective, um, means a physical salvation. So this idea of something very, very, very bad is going to happen to you if you don't get saved and do everything um, and believe the way that we believe, that is something new that came into the world from man-made religions. That is nothing that originated with uh, the Jews. And the Jews are to be a light to the nations, and Rahab recognized this. She recognized that the God of Israel was the God of heaven and earth, and she. it doesn't mean that um, Rahab and her whole family, we don't know if they all converted to Judaism. They say that Rahab did, but her whole family was saved. I don't know. <laughs> that wasn't the, the plan. It wasn't the plan that the whole world has to convert to Judaism. The whole world just has to know who the one true God is, the God of Israel, and has to follow his commandments, has to treat other people the way they want to be treated, don't treat other people the way you wouldn't want to be treated. And it takes a lifetime to perfect ourselves. And that's what we're doing. We're getting rid of our addictions, our bad habits. We're watching what comes out of our mouth. We're learning how to treat people. This is who we are. This is our message to the world. We're making this world a civilized, beautiful home for God. And when I, I had a question from my other video about what does that mean that God is coming down to earth. And we are all made in the image of God. And when we take on his characteristics, it's like bringing heaven down to earth. And it's like God living on earth through us. So we are, um, we are in the flesh doing everything that, is, that he wants us to do, being the kind of people he wants us to be. So it's about um, perfecting the earth, living here. God likes diversity. We don't go around telling people they have to believe and get baptized or go to hell or die or be banished. Whatever century you're living in, it's a, it's a different message, but it's all the same. It's something that people um, do to terrorize other people, whether it's in a really nice, sweet way or in a way of soldiers coming to your door, the outcome is the same. It's, it's, it's not the message of the God of Israel. Okay, so I'm very thankful for uh, my mother and her love, and I know that she did the best she could, and all of us mothers are doing the best that we can to give our children um, a heritage and to pass down the correct beliefs to them. And so I just want to go straight back to the God of Israel and to Mount Sinai, and um, we can learn from, from Rahab, we can learn from Jethro, we can learn from people outside of Israel what is expected of non-Jews. And they are supposed to notice what's going on with Israel, and they're supposed to um, give their loyalties to the God of Israel. All right, that's all for now.